You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, TV. TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Bridge After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Bridge After Show. Hey guys, and welcome to AfterBuzz TV's The Bridge After Show. I'm excited because, sadly, we didn't get to do last week's episode one, so we're going to do a combination. Episodes one, episode two. But first of all, joining me tonight, all the way across the table, I, can, I can't even reach you guys because you're so far away. <laughs> I know, you are so far. So far away. <laughs> The lovely Catherine Tulich. Hi, how are you? I'm Great doing to be good. Here. And Paige Sullivan. Yes, hello. This is like a creepy song to be introducing. I know. It's not really like invigorating. Uh, well, That's the, okay. We'll invigorate you. Yeah, the show's not super. This show's kind of creepy. I yeah, mean, I find it creepy. Just a little bit. Look, bodies split in half that are different people's bodies, as we found out. It's not quite Hannibal or uh, or the following, but it's still pretty creepy. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, we're not actually seeing the acts happening, so yes. to that extent, it's not as creepy. Yeah. Exactly. But let's go ahead and jump right into it because we do have a lot to cover as we're doing two episodes. And let's talk about the, the bridge scene at the beginning because that is what sets us up for the entirety of the show. And we meet our central character, which is Detective Sonia Cross and our other detective uh, from down from uh, Juarez, which is Marco Ruiz. And they're investigating the crime scene where there is what we think is a single dead body. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Little yes. do you know. Little do you know. Yeah. Well, I, you know, obviously it's this fantastic kind of combination because we have two detectives here. And then we think, okay, what, well, they're going to split the case. And then they have to really split the case, right? Because we don't they realize exactly. that there's a body from each country. And uh, we should mention that this is actually based on a Swedish Danish co production. So this was actually, it's supposedly on a bridge that was actually between the two countries and it was a similar concept. So mm. this was this was a show by. Based uh, made back in 2011. I wonder what the uh, what parallels you could draw then or from the two shows because I mean this seems so to make so much sense between exactly the border in Mexico and the border in El Paso. Yeah. So it really does make sense here, and it's it's amazing how you can do that in two different countries and still have the same type of show. Yeah. Well, a lot of people actually said that it, this show in some ways has more meaning by making it a U.S. Mexican thing because that that border is far more uh, compelling that to mm-hmm. the split between the border and also all the, all the problems that. Have happening in Juarez and all the killings that are happening down there. So I think this, to you know, we've seen great remakes like The Killing and, and shows like that, but I think The Bridge being remade from a European show is actually spot on that we should have an American version because I think it's so fitting that what the, for the topic. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah. I totally agree with you. And, I mean, there's a lot of um, European shows that don't end up translating mm-hmm. well and that also just end up being poor remakes. Yeah, exactly. So I think that, as you were saying, this is one that totally makes sense and really fits in here with the border issues. And mm-hmm. that is the thing that we get here because what we find out with this body that's in the first scene, as first it just looks like a dead body and they pull it, they try to pick it up. <laughs> Turns out it's cut right in half right on the border. Yeah, and I didn't note this. Was the top half in Mexico or was it in Texas? Mm. Because the top half was an American woman. She's a judge. Right. And the yeah. bottom half was a Mexican woman. But I, I, for some reason, I feel like they were on opposite sides, and I don't know if that was something. But it, it was very – after that happened, Mexico got involved. But at first, they were very much going to wipe their hands clean mm. of the case. Well, they I had mean, enough troubles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, it seems like they were going to wipe their hands and yeah. didn't care. It was just specifically Marco, who's our good cop. He mm-hmm. seems like the good guy. He wants to be involved because his El Capitan did not seem to give a funk. Mm-hmm. He didn't really care that much. So no. it's just we have this one good cop who really wants to press into it and seems to get in a little bit over his heads when you're talking about the cartel. Well, I think the captain, that's the thing about Mexico. And when you're delving deeper into the second episode, which we'll talk about later, but you're learning that the captain probably has, you know, dual purposes in his job. You know, it's not really clean cut, whereas Marco is really out there to be a detective and to solve murders and to do good. 
So that's something you get right off the bat. I think you get that in the first episode too, because I definitely was suspicious when um when Marco goes to talk to the captain and he's mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. place where there's all the exotic animals and they're playing, they're gambling and right. playing cards, and it does set up this scene that this guy has some sort of connections probably to the cartel. And he has to ask permission to cover this and to be involved in this case when it happens on their land, and they should be doing it right. anyways. So that's you know yeah. right off the bat really not great. Um, you obviously can tell pretty quickly that Marco knows how to play the game. He knows how to start, you know, because mm-hmm. obviously he's got to keep himself safe, his family safe in this very tricky situation, mm-hmm. you know, very corrupt police force, but he's trying to be the good guy, the good cop. So he's. we can obviously see through both episodes the way he's learned to have to try and navigate. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and jump on his character and talk about mm-hmm. these characters that we get, because that's a lot of what the first episode was about, was these introductions, getting the character details down. And as we're on Marco, it, it does seem like he is really intuitive he seems very smart he's a the family man he just seems like the overall good guy and i'm wondering he's got to have some sort of flaw that we haven't quite found yet in him because to Mm -hmm. me he seems like there isn't really any bad point to him yet to me right he seems like a people pleaser i mean even with the captain you know he knows what to ask for and what not to ask for and with sonia he knows you know he can tell right off the bat there's something about her Mm -hmm. and he just goes along with it and he doesn't kind of hold it against her so i feel like he is definitely a good guy, a nice guy, but maybe there is something underlying, but maybe yeah. not. Maybe he is the one guy, you know, that... I like to think for. there's people out there like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's hope. And it is a nice contrast to yeah. our Detective Sonia uh, Cross, but before we get to that, I do want to point out Lions fan on the chat says, the, the captain has ulterior motives while Marco wants to do the right thing and follow the law to a T, a great example of how Mexico law really is. So again, that connection there. And Ryan Willison on the chat says, yeah, that's Mexico right there. The cartels pretty much run things, especially right now. I mean, right now and lately, the cartel has been out of control. I think it's scary to think. And watching the show, it seems, you know, it's a TV show. We forget that this is a real-life topic. And I think that's why this show is going to be kind of a hit for people because we haven't really seen this being delved into on TV lately. I totally agree. I think that's a great point. Um, But, yeah, he does seem like the overall people pleaser good guy. And that is a huge contrast to Sonya Cross, who... As we see first with the hospital, with the ambulance trying to cross, yeah, not having any of it. And no. it's kind of interesting because we really don't know what's going on with her other than she obviously has no empathy. She has her kind of agenda. She doesn't really – Yeah, it's sort of interesting because when you're not realizing what's going on with her, it's like, wow, yeah. <laughs> this yeah. woman's really harsh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At, at first I was thinking she's really harsh, and then as yeah. the episode went on, I was like, okay, clearly she has, as you said, no empathy. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to figure out what the disease was because she has to have some sort of disease. And you actually pointed out to us – before the show, so I will give you the spotlight. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, it's been. Yeah, she's got Asperger's. That's what her condition is. But and it's been interesting because there's been sort of debate of like, would someone like that be employed as a cop? Because you know, she obviously doesn't have empathy. She has no idea how to treat people. So, but she, I guess, she's so analytical and she can ask questions. That's her skill. But you know, again, she comes uh, at a time when there's a lot of flawed women on TV, like Homeland. You know, yeah. uh, Claire Dane's character. So it's an interesting. Is she likable? Is she not likable do we want to like her is it in or it doesn't really matter if we don't like her i think she's intriguing i don't i don't necessarily like her or dislike her Mm. right off the bat i knew there was something going on and i was kind of just playing it out Mm. hoping that somebody would address it throughout the show um and we were kind of playing a guessing game watching the second episode but i don't i don't dislike her i just can't relate to her and i think that's the point nobody can relate to her because Mm. she's she's much different than everybody else in the show they all have empathy and they're going through these tough things and she sees it white and black i mean it's crime Mm. it's not a crime it's a scene it's not a scene it's funny because the first scene of the show i found her very unlikable and as the Mm season started or as the show kept on going on the episode and i realized it was a disease it was almost more I started kind of like laughing, like, oh my gosh, she, she has no empathy. She, mm. It's just so ridiculous how she cannot deal with people. But as you said, Catherine, she does have this great detective skill set where yeah. she really notices those small details. And mm-hmm. yeah. that's kind of what makes it interesting. I kind of found this relation to Monk, the TV show Monk, yeah. where that detective who mm. is flawed in their personality and their character, that character trait allows them to be a really good detective at the exactly. same time. Yeah. For him, it's over OCD. Yeah. For, for her, it happens to be Asperger's. So. Yeah. Uh, kind of an interesting though with that character and our, our other big character that we have uh, is Daniel mm-hmm. big scene in the first episode with Daniel our reporter character and uh, man what would you guys do if you were in that situation bomb in the car cry I do the same exact thing he did cry exactly I don't know I, I, I would hope I'll never be in that position but if I were to be 
I would definitely freak out a bit. And I, Sonia, again, Sonia asking him all those questions and he's freaking know, out. Yeah. But he does answer. Again, no she, empathy. No empathy. No None. empathy. <laughs> but he answers them. He yeah, does. Yeah, he does yeah, answer he them. He does answer. Yeah. That's but I guess he doesn't know what else to do because he just wants help. He's like, maybe if I answer this question, she'll help me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's got to be like, I was thinking like, how funny would it be? I mean, this they definitely aren't doing this. I'm just thinking it would be crazy if they decided like, the person who did this is actually a big prankster and actually isn't the killer. He's just a horrible prankster. The guy who did that to Daniel, not the killer, just a terrible prankster. I just, I was just that'd like, that would be, be funny. Yeah. But I must admit, I sort of when I saw that first scene, I thought, I don't think they're going to kill him off that. Like that's Lillard. what we said. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, he's obviously you know major actor, major character. I thought something they can't be just getting rid of him yeah. fast. Come on. And it was so good yeah. watching that scene. It was so compelling, and I was so into this show yeah. that I was. I was hoping they weren't going to kill him off because it would end too quickly. I want to know more about him and who he was and what he does. I think that was one of the two scenes from the first episode that really hooked me into the show mm -hmm. was that scene in the car. It was a great scene to do, and yeah. he was, he acted it really well. Another thing we know about his character is he, other than being a journalist, he seems to be an alcoholic. alcoholic yeah. So uh, we're getting Well, when you're a journalist, you usually are an yeah, alcoholic. True. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Goes with the territory. <laughs> that's a common journalist flaw. <laughs> exactly. Common journalist trope. <laughs> Exactly. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Cliche journalist sort of, yes. <laughs> but the other scene that really kind of hooked me in the first episode was this scene with, I, I believe her character's name is Charlotte, and mm -hmm. I don't know if we've actually heard it in the first two episodes. I, I had IMDb it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think her husband Her first husband's name is Carl. Oh, but did he, he? He referred to her as that when they were in the hospital room. And he oh. broke and the he news broke to her <laughs> right before he died. She had two, Ooh, two bad news deliveries yeah. that day. Yeah. That's got to be gut wrenching day, but after she gets through, uh, Charlotte gets through the scene where she's like the door, where it's like what's on the mm -hmm. other side of the door. I was so intrigued. I was like, "What is it? What's mm -hmm. on the other side of this door? I have to know." Yeah. I, I know Paige and I. We were talking about it before we watched the second episode. We were just like, we had the most horrible speculations oh, of what yeah. be on the other side of the door. <laughs> it we was had, like, bad. Sex trade or like. Yeah. I thought there's families living families. under there. I mean, what we found wasn't that great either, but I just thought there were going to be people. Yeah, it's just <laughs> exactly. a tunnel. It's just yeah. a tunnel that it's, brings illegals in. It's crazy that to have a character like Charlotte who her husband passes away and she has no idea about the things that are going on in her own life on her own land. And that's scary because that can happen to a lot of people. People pass away and then you find out a plethora of things you had no idea about. Well, we sort of, I guess in the second episode, we sort of find out that she was a, not a showgirl. What was she? She was a hostess. A hostess. A hostess, a hostess right. So yeah. obviously married well and I guess didn't really ask too many questions. <laughs> not, none at all, really. She didn't <laughs> even know about all. the key. Yeah. He also had that cell phone. So maybe he was, an, he was having an affair might be implied. Or mm. it could be a cell phone to a coyote, which might be the other deal. Or to that... The yeah. man that we meet, which might be what that cell phone is really for. But a woman Actually, answered. That makes, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Good point. A woman answered. So, I mean, who knows? She could be the person who answers the phone on the other end. Right. I mean, who knows? But it was implied that it was maybe an affair at the beginning. That's what I was thinking. Right, that's right what I thought, too. Um, something I do want to point out, because I use this term, the El Coyote, is something that, um, I, I mean, it's kind of implied throughout the show, but if you right. don't know what it means, a coyote is a person who leads... Um, illegals from Mexico to the United States. Mm -hmm. That's what the coyote's job is. And they, they still live in the south of the border, but they're the one who knows the route, who's going to take someone who pays them well or when they get paid from Mexico, knows the secret routes, and takes them into America and then returns to Mexico. That's what a coyote is, so you guys know. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I didn't know that. Wanted to point that term out for the, everyone watching. Wow. Okay. Because there's also, a, there was also a big connection at the end of the second episode, too, which I will get to when we get to that. But a really big coyote metaphorical meaning that we see there. But uh, let's see. What other? We also have Steven. That's the other character that we have introduced in the first episode. Mm -hmm. Not a good guy. <laughs> not a good guy. Well, we don't know that he's not a good guy. I mean, do we know what he does exactly? He sticks this girl in his trunk. She's obviously asked to leave Mexico. She wants right. to get out of Mexico. And then she changes her mind. And then she changes her mind, mm -hmm. and he sticks her in there anyways. But it, we don't see him harming her. We don't see him treating her poorly. And going into the second episode, it's hard to not jump, but we see that she was maybe getting away from something Right, worse. I guess it was just yeah. the garbage bags that, that made you jump. Well, that was the first thing. I was like, oh, is she in those garbage bags? <laughs> yes, that's yeah. right. And then he burnt what all that, and then he burnt everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good point, though. You make a really good point I didn't even think about. It. You are just led to assume that he is a bad guy. 
but we really do never get any scene of him doing anything bad. No. So it is very possible that they're just trying to trick you there. Maybe he was just taking out the garbage and burning it because <laughs> maybe there is no place to take the garbage. And there's no one to take out the garbage <laughs> course, in the middle. Have... Well, he's in the middle of nowhere. So, I mean, maybe that's the only way he can get rid of the garbage. I'd be suspicious at all taking big garbage bags out. Burning <laughs> but he's in the middle of nowhere. Right, he's in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely. So where's the garbage man? He's not going to come out there. No. Hey, apparently there's a lot of twists in this show. So that would be a twist because you're really led to believe that he's a horrible person. Yeah, right off the bat. Even the way his sideburns are, I was, when he first came on the TV, I was like, is that Wolverine? Like an X Men? I was like, is that Wolverine? But so even his appearance is yeah. harsh. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't look like a likable guy. God, you know what? Now that I think about it, I almost think that it is a twist. And he's not, now that we're talking about it, I mean, I guess I'd say that for predictions, but now I kind of think that he's not actually bad. Yeah. Now no. that we just had this yeah. conversation, <laughs> we're talking it things. through. All right, so Ryan Willis on the chat says Charlotte seemed like a typical trophy wife, and Lions fan thinks that uh, Charlotte was a gold digger. So not too much uh, positive thoughts for our our, our lady but Charlotte there. She yeah. seemed genuinely hurt by her husband's words and when he passed away. She mm. doesn't see she seems like a grieving wife, not a gold digger who's no. excited to wrangle in all that money. She genuinely seems upset. Yeah. So that's where cuz at first I agreed. I thought she was a gold digger, but now I don't know. I think she's going to, well, it's probably more predictions, but I think uh, she's going to end up being a fairly strong character. I mean, I think we're just laying the grain, groundwork of who she is, mm -hmm. and I think she's going to obviously become, you know, uh, she's going to pull through with some amazing things. That's what I think. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. I mean, she, yeah. she has that strong presence from the beginning, mm. the very beginning, trying to get the ambulance across. Yeah. So, and she's also, I mean, the scene, the second episode that we'll get to, mm -hmm. great scene with her rejecting yes. the money. Yeah. Uh, but so, with that said, before we move on, we do, I do want to point out again the very important detail of the bridge, which we mentioned briefly, which is that it was two different bodies that were, as you said, um, one side was on the Mexican border and of uh, probably the American ethnicity and then the Mexican ethnicity, the legs yeah. on the Mexican border. And apparently this has been... These bodies have been dead for, I think, 14 months for the Mexican lady. The legs, yeah. For the legs. 14 months. So wow. this has been in the planning for a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you hear in the second episode about the voice record was three years old. So right. Yeah. The voice record is three years old. Three years old. So this has been a long time planning. <laughs> long, long time planning. Yeah. So as we were talking about Charlotte, let's get it, go ahead and talk about the beginning of the second episode and jump into the second episode where we have her finally opening the door. Thank Turns God. out it's a tunnel to Mexico. And it seems like Carl was somehow hooked up with running illegals across the border. Mm -hmm. And he had made a deal with what seems like a client of, I believe his name is Monty P. Flagman. I didn't quite <laughs> yes, I it. think he said it so quick, I rewound three times. Really? I was like, is that? Okay, I think it was Monty P. Flagman. I tried to Monty... look it up on IMDb, I couldn't find it. Really? I don't gonna... know who played This is the guy with the hat, right? Yeah, this yeah. Well, he looks like Lyle Lovett, but I don't think it is Lyle Lovett. <laughs> but let's go with Monty P. Flagman for now. <laughs> if we're okay, wrong, now. go ahead and... But I was trying to figure out who play was blow playing us apart him. Yeah. On the... <laughs> blow us apart on the comments yeah. if we're wrong. Well, yeah. he's a crooked lawyer, apparently. Or maybe mm. he's not crooked. His client seems mm. a little, you know, touchy. Yeah. yeah. I don't well, know. Well, he's like yeah. Sal Goodman. Yeah, that's exactly like a Breaking Bad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, the way he comes in, you automatically have to bat know it's the, about the tunnel. Because she has no idea who he is, and he comes off pretty strong. Yeah. And his, oh, his card, that American flag, mm. Texas card. I mean, he's got Texas pride, but smuggling immigrants. Yeah, well, know. he's got money pride. Yeah. He just wants that moolah. But the way he brings it up is so, you know, like, sneaky and sly. And he just says, oh, well, my client, mm -hmm. and we have a pre-existing deal, and all of this, as, so much as if it's a business, and less about this huge immigration problem that Texas has. Well, it does seem like, I mean, that is what it is to him. It is just business to him. That's all I think he cares about. I don't think he has any politics, really, frankly. I think all he cares about is the money. Mm -hmm. And he even points out, like, do you realize that, see this horse? The thor thoroughbred horse, $100,000 is what it's worth. It was a gift. Yeah. So clearly all he cares about is the money. So he, uh, he points to a pot, does a little tap on the pot, <laughs> and leaves Charlotte with this pot to see what's yeah. inside. Yeah. Turns out quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm. no, no stew in there. <laughs> no three bean soup. I thought this was going to be another salad. tease, too. I thought it was yeah. going to be like, what's in the pot? And you have to wait until the next episode Me to too. see what's in the pot, like right. they did with the door. But we did get the reveal. Yeah. They're very, with their transitions, we got fooled a couple times. But with the pot, you know, they leave you wanting more. And there was another point where they show somebody's legs and then a person bending down and it's a different person. So mm -hmm. it's very 
this show constantly keeps me on edge. You I'm really have wondering. to pay attention. Yeah, you really do because there's so much, and I think what we're seeing now, it's laying the groundwork, but there's going to be little things that later on tie into the whole case or tie into Obviously. a storyline mm. that we don't think yet. Yeah. So, um, but it, it then turns out, well, she she's given this offer basically to accept his deal, take the money, and maybe she's not so much of a trophy wife, and she's not just going to take money in that sense because uh, she immediately she comes back, returns, dumps actual food <laughs> yes. onto the table, which was awesome, awesome scene, and then throws the money back at him. So. Um, I, I really Which is like probably that scene. not a good idea, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> no, I, that's probably not the right people to mess no, with. No, probably not. She's uh, she's got some balls doing that. <laughs> she does, and even with yeah. the way she says, just board it up, board it up, and she doesn't even think about the consequences. I mean, mm. yeah. like we've said, the cartel is a force, and they're not somebody that I would yeah. be willing to reckon with. Well, it's, it's funny too because we're getting this cartel connection. I agree with you. I think it's definitely got to be cartel related. But from her perspective, I mean, all you see is a illegal tunnel. You wouldn't necessarily mm. automatically think it's a cartel thing. You would just think like, okay, it's just some illegal immigrant thing and not necessarily yeah. cartel. And I think the only reason I'm assuming, I guess, myself, is that it's cartel is because of the money that's involved. Which she oh, yeah, that's a good point. Which she didn't yeah, know exactly. initially. So the immigrants, they, they themselves, they don't have a lot of money, and they wouldn't be able to afford a thoroughbred horse or to pay her off. So that's why it kind of seems it's coming. Maybe it's El Capitan. <laughs> who yeah. knows who it is? But it definitely seems like a bigger force. That is a very good point. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Yeah. So moving on to um, our our main crew here, Sonia Cross and Marco Ruiz, they we start off with them um, interrogating Daniel mm -hmm. and trying to get out of him information. He realizes immediately the voice, uh, not too happy with yeah. Sonia there for what yeah. she was doing. <laughs> exactly. Questioning him while he's almost losing his yes. life. Right. I mean, insensitive. <laughs> And uh, kind of questioning about the message from the killer. And, you know, the whole killer thing, too, that voice kind of reminded me of Saw a little bit. The Saw oh, movies. Yeah. Because that dark voice mm -hmm. that's doing kind of this puzzle. I saw a Saw connection there. Yeah. I have to say. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it makes sense. It's something that you would do if you want to mask a voice. But it was kind of intuitive the way they did it. I liked what the reveal was with that. So... They go then to talk with Lieutenant Hank Wade and kind of like figure out their plans from there. And they end up going to investigate as they find out um, this whole missing body case. And they leave to go investigate. And Marco's in the car with Sonia, and we get a little bit more of a glimpse into their personalities, where Sonia's confused as Marco gets a call from his wife. I know, I love that. that that's what's so interesting about her character, because it does lead to some very, almost comic, in a way, It was uh, funny. Scenes. It yeah. was really funny that she just couldn't understand why his wife was calling. That right. Was like, <laughs> it's like the little things yeah. with her that she doesn't get. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously the big thing that happened in this episode that none of us, we were dying <laughs> watching, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, the little things, just, yeah. she doesn't understand why somebody would just call to say hi. Yeah. And she doesn't get it. It's a waste of time to her. Doesn't yeah. she know you're working? It's just, but you, you just get sex and get done with it. You, yes. <laughs> you want to have Great sex? Attitude. Let's go. I yeah. Know. Who's the Love guy it. who just go? I mean, that guy went, but I mean, I wouldn't be like, yeah, yeah, sure, let's go. Like, okay. <laughs> I love that scene. That I think a lot of guys <laughs> would do that. <laughs> Maybe it's from a girl's well, Especially if it's Diane Kruger asking you. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I think a lot of guys go to the bars with the idea of a one-night stand. Yeah. And yeah. like, all right, it's in front of me. All right, whatever. Yeah. But even he looked like he felt awkward. Like, uh. Well, yeah, that's a is, very is this a joke? Weird. Is someone, you know. He wakes up to her looking pumped. at corpses. I mean, rough night. It's so funny, though, when that happened, when he was looking at the corpses, I, I was thinking, oh, my God, he's going to say, I know that. Person. I right? thought there was going to be some kind of weird scene. I, yeah, I like, thought there would be a little bit more to it as well. Yeah, I was thinking maybe she picked him up because she knew there was a clue that he mm -hmm. knew something. I, I don't know, was, that was going through my head for a minute because, you know, she pulled out the iPad, she's starting to look, and he's going, what are you looking at? And I thought there might have been like, I know that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I right? actually didn't think he would leave. I, mean, I guess he was weirded out and left, but I kind of thought maybe he'd be his intrigue would keep him there and be like, but what is that? Know. What are you doing? Right, like, yeah. I would be, in, I'd be curious. I don't know, like, I mean... I'm surprised she let him see it because don't you think that's yeah, quite that's confidential what I that's what and I she's thought. very by the book? Yeah, yes, that's, that's not by the books. But that's why I thought maybe she knew who he was and he knew something. That's, but you know, obviously well, maybe, I was wrong. Yeah, because why would you start pulling out your work? It was kind of weird. Well, that's, because she just doesn't weird. stop working. Yeah. 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 It does not stop working. Oh, you want to stay? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. You can stay. Whatever. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Fantastic. So funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and then before that, she was doing doing work on her own. Yeah. Oh, and then the next day when she feeling. tells her, uh, you know, cat, here, yeah. oh, did you work all night? Oh, no, I had sex. Yeah. And he's like, you don't have to tell me. Don't tell me that. <laughs> don't tell me that. I mean, who's that open with she their boss? She is just totally blunt. File <laughs> a report against, uh, against yeah. her partner, too. Yeah. Yeah. We should find out. So I wonder, that's probably going to come back in a couple episodes, too. That she filed that report? Yeah. You think so? I, I bet we're going to see that report come back. Do you think it went through, though? Because I think she filed it and gave it to her lieutenant, and her lieutenant was kind of like, eh, yeah, not but, a good idea. Right. I, I kind of, I don't know. I kind of feel like it did. I think that's going to yeah. be a pop point in a couple episodes. That'll uh-huh. come back. Yeah. Bummer, because I like Marco. I don't. I, wanna, do I don't want to have an issue there. Marco's <laughs> the best, but I, I feel like it's got to like cause some issue and tension in the future episode where he's not going to be allowed to do something because yeah. of that. Because of it, maybe. Yeah, I, I think it'll cause some issue, and then it'll probably be as their relationship is growing and they're bonding. That's when the report comes out mm-hmm. and finally hits him, and then he hates her again. Well, I don't exactly. think he hates her. Well, not hates her, it's bothered. He doesn't understand right. her. Yeah. But they insist- She's very interesting, yeah. as yeah. you would say. Or, yeah. But he handles different. her well. He handles her really well. He does handle her well, and it's He's funny. He's a smooth talker. Mm. But do you... Uh, his wife is getting the feeling, oh, is she pretty? Oh, is she, mm. she is pretty, and he's saying she's different. So yeah. she's obviously feeling a little insecure with yeah. the fact yeah. that he's working with this woman. But I almost feel like he would never feel that way about Sonia. It would be more of like a friendship, oh, a, a sure. partnership. You know, they're totally. partners. Totally. I don't think that's ever going to go. But right. I mean, the, the wife's going to get a little jealous when yeah. it's a pretty person. She doesn't know the extent yeah. of her personality Maybe disorder. Maybe she should meet Sonia yeah. and then yeah. be like, oh, I'm not worried. Yeah, yeah no problems there. Nothing <laughs> to worry about. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I, I did like, I enjoyed that that scene was juxtaposed with um, Marco coming back to his wife, and you see Sonia in her scenes are is she doesn't want any sort of romantic touching, anything mm-hmm. that would cause emotion. It's just have sex, get done with it. I don't want to yeah. be hugged. I don't want to be cu- kissed. Nothing at all. And then that's juxtaposed with Marco, who comes home to his wife. They immediately hug, immediately embrace, immediately mm-hmm. kiss. They are so um, into each other romantically, and, and it's just such a you really see the differences in the characters because yeah. they play those against each other. Yeah, big contrast You're right. between. And his wife's pregnant again. Yeah, yeah so it turns out Marco's Rough. procedure we didn't talk about apparently uh, didn't work. <sighs> or maybe it just happened or, prior to right, the Right, or maybe procedure. it was prior to the procedure. He, he wasn't quick enough. <laughs> Not quick Too enough bad. for the guns. Uh-huh. But that, that's another thing that I think um, is that the fact that she's going to get pregnant or is pregnant, definitely with the cartel coming in the factor, I think that's just upping the stakes. They have just upped the stakes for future episodes. You think his family's going to be in serious totally. danger? Totally, especially now that yeah. she's pregnant. And he mentioned something as well. Mm. My family can be taken out you yeah. know, in the desert, and they'll wa- make me watch as they kill them. Like mm. He says he knows that is a yeah. risk he's taking. And if if you watch, he goes and he sees the prostitute, and he talks to her, and she's 16, He's she's a child, and then he comes home and talks to his wife, and she says, Sophie and Lily. So he has daughters. Yeah. So I feel yeah. like this is really hitting close to home for him. Sophie, and Lily, and Gus. Hard. Gus would be the son who well, is smoking Gus's pot. Is Gus his son? I don't know, because they were talking about like him staying, and they're yes. like, he needs to get out of here. And so maybe he's a brother, maybe he's a cousin. Who knows who Gus is? Yeah. We didn't meet Gus. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. So he has daughters, and I mean, that's... As high stakes as it is with the prostitution and the killings. And, and there's got to be a scene too, again, prediction, I guess, early, but there's got to be a scene where um, his family's going to be at some sort of risk In where risk. he's worried and Sonya's not going to understand how to empathize for that. Yeah, and exactly. she's not going to do a good job doing that. As with the judge, she didn't do a good job. Yeah. Would you like some water, by the way? <laughs> Would you like some water? <laughs> right. With the whole judge scene? Yes, that's all right. uh, I thought you were legitimately yeah. asking. I was like, I think she's got I know, she's <laughs> got some water. Got water. Yeah. Come on, relating to yeah. last week. I know it was a week ago, all right? <laughs> So I La- started a while ago. <laughs> Lions fan says Sonia wants friends with benefits type of relationship. I, I don't think she wants a friends with no. benefits. I mm-hmm. think she just wanted sex and out. In and out, one night stand. Yeah, yeah. No I don't think she's after not after friends. Not after friends. I, I, she I doesn't know yeah. friends. It. No. But they she did, does care about her sister a lot, I was going to say, because her sister passed away, and she's mentioned that. And yeah. so maybe she would... Maybe she can relate to people who have lost someone. I don't know. Maybe. Was that the one person she was close to? How did her sister die? I mean, I feel like that's something we're going to learn about. Yeah. So so we do get, going back to um, the scene where Marco and Sonia are off, they they get to the uh, the station in Juarez where things are disorganized, and she's finally, she's asking too many questions, and we finally get Marco's buttons being pressed when she there's this thing that clearly he's trying to hide from his captain that he has yeah. disclosed to her, this case, this missing body case. And she openly just asks right away, <laughs> doesn't get it, not understanding how to play the system. I know. Yeah. Was he smart telling her then? Because he should he should know that she doesn't really have... Right, because she asked what's left concept. in the box. Yeah. yeah. Well, apparently not, because then, uh, th- then she doesn't... 
that El Capitan doesn't want anything about this yeah. guy, Fasto Galvan, being mentioned. Well, I think it's Rava Galvan. I think he's related to Fasto. Right, okay, yeah, because okay. the boss says Rava Galvan, because and Rava then is she a, says Fasto Galvan. Well, Rava okay. is the picture in the box. That right. He's the dead guy. He was dead. They took him out of the system. And then they show a sign that's Fasto, and it says wanted. So he, I think, is still at large. Mm. I think this is a relative, and that's why they took him out of the system, is because they don't want to get involved. With yeah. whatever that is. Whatever that situation is, they don't want anything to do with it. He's wiped from the system. His body's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I think you I think you could be right. I, I didn't make the connection. Good job. Nice. I think that's what I'm thinking happened because there was a lot of wanted people, but that's where I saw his name. So I think yeah. they're re- obviously they have the same last name. They're related in some way. But then him, this gets him in trouble with El Capitan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is where his button is pressed with Sonya asking too many questions and now getting him in trouble because he does have so much mm-hmm. at stake. Mm-hmm. So this now we know where Marco's um, buttons are pressed and the whole family man thing. Right. That's where you can draw the line with him. Yeah, exactly. Go a little bit too far. Yeah, she pushed it, and he he yells at her, and she still doesn't even really feel bad. He's yeah, just like we're going home. Yeah, she still doesn't get it. And as, as she said, uh, and and she guys has a conversation with Hank Wade, who the, the lieutenant, and he's asking about the how her and Mark are doing, and she gets that she pissed him off. Yeah, she did. She but said she, he asked too many asked too many questions. So right. She, she obviously got something that she realized she did wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. she did it again. Mm-hmm. Ah, well, not again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that's the conversation we talked about before. And then they realize that the man who kidnapped the girl, uh, who kidnapped the judge, this is the scene where we find out that he was waiting in the backseat of the car the whole mm-hmm. time. And we get that little computer image about how the judge was taken. And that's always one of my fears when I'm driving my car. Like, what if somebody pops out of the backseat? <laughs> you really think that? Well, yeah. And only at night when I'm like, it's only specific <laughs> times. At like night, if I'm like in this weird mood where maybe really? I just saw a horror movie, I'll like get in my car. Yeah, that's and that's not be good driving. after a horror movie. Right. I'll get in my car and drive and I'm just like imagine that like somebody will be just sitting in my backseat. I'm like, no! <laughs> yeah, my mom always taught me when yeah. I, from the day I got my license, always to check my backseat before I start driving. Mm, wow. I don't know. I but if someone's there, what are you going to do? I know, exactly. Like, just run away? I mean, I don't know. Just stop the car and just, <laughs> yeah. like, jump out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I do. Or crash my car just to get both of us at the same time. You're not going to get me. I'll get both of us. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, <laughs> Lordy. I don't know what I would do. That is, like, the creepiest yeah. thing because you would feel so helpless because you're, like, sitting with the seatbelt on. And they're in your back seat. Right. Oh, gosh. But anyways, that, I don't know. I just want to talk about these. Side That's note. So scary. Side note. <laughs> So let's go ahead and talk about Daniel because Daniel is at an editor's meeting and he's he's kind of finally relating to the other journalists and uh, we get a little bit more of his alcoholism probably causing problems at work mm-hmm. and the fact that he's an why are you such a dick I was born that way that <laughs> that whole issue with him but he he gets a call while he's out with his journalist buddy with this these numbers yes fortunately she happens she's to know so smart GPS is didn't going, you know it was gps oh totally oh totally knew that <laughs> i thought it was like a bank account number yeah. that's what i thought I like, that's a really long number i actually started writing it out like maybe i'd really? figure out and, well like i didn't know if they reveal it right away yeah. so as they were saying i was writing it out of my notes like uh. okay maybe i can figure this out and as it kept on going it's just like okay i have no, no clue idea. this is a long number i <laughs> right. do not know uh. but good thing that apparently uh she knew, she yeah, knew. no, her dad was. Uh, I didn't. I didn't hear where her dad was. I don't her recall. Her dad did something but with did latitude something. and longitude. Latitude and longitude. So she knows. And can I just say, I totally called it in the room, what where they were going. Oh yeah, oh, he did. Yeah. Um, I didn't see that. I totally called it. Oh, that they were going to go where all the that, bodies. Yeah, yeah. But, I, yeah. I sort of thought that too because we saw the scene earlier that they were drinking and something terrible was going to happen. Well, we saw and, somebody put the bottles down mm, and then we come back right. to it. So obviously yeah. it was a re- reoccurring thing throughout yeah. the whole. I just didn't. I didn't put the two and two together. But all right, before we move on to this, because we're going to get the whole Im- mm. Ill- illegal, illegal immigrant talk, and this is kind yeah. of the big uh, ending. Let's talk about the whole mission that we had Marco going on that we saw where Marco went into the scums of Jerez and he was trying to find out about this whole prostitute issue and trying to discover what was kind of going on. And, and Christina. F- right, and find out what happened to Christina and he was trying to question the girls and found out that apparently she used to work in this area, yeah. the sort of brothel. The room he was in, apparently she had she that had the room. room. Yes. Kind of creepy. Yeah. It was a little creepy. I think that's really creepy. It was the Maculadoras. That's what they were called, the Maculadoras. Even for that girl, though, oh, she used to work this room. It's like, oh, this is a 16-year-old girl and she yeah. knows this girl's been murdered and she's working well, as a prostitute. I mean, it's just sad to watch. Yeah, but I mean, it's horrific what is, has been happening in Juarez. So, I mean, I guess they start getting immune to the fact that these girls go missing and I, die. And uh, I mean, it's... I'm, 
Well, that's astounding. A, that's a big part of the yeah. of the show uh, mm. with what the murderer says. How come mm. one white yeah. lady is more important than all the people who disappear every day? Yeah, and they pull yeah. out those stats for you too about how it's horrifying incredible. it is. Yeah. And I mean, that's, I to mean, think this is just happening literally over the border from America. Right, it's, it's insane. terrible. Yeah, absolutely insane. But I mean, mm. again, it's just that the whole uh, cartel issue. Mm-hmm. Really, I mean. I don't think it's necessarily one place is more important than the other. I think it's just more of a justice system issue and an issue with the cartel and drug trade, really. Yeah. Right. This guy's an extremist. I don't like yeah. this enemy. So, yeah, somebody's trying to... Not that point. like it's good that this is happening in Mexico, but I don't think it's America's fault. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I think... This person, and we don't know where this person is. Are they American? Are they from Mexico? Were yeah, they we have no immigrant? idea. We have no idea who this person is. Are they a political party? I mean, no idea. Yeah. So that's the hard part. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know their opinions and their thoughts. All you know is that they're pretty upset. Yeah. And But they're also willing, we, we assume it's the same person, to kill more people mm. and to kill more immigrants. So yeah. you're upset that all these people are going missing, yet you, you just killed 10 yeah. people or however many people were down there. Right. It's it's a, it's a strange situation. And you you have to wonder if maybe it's like a couple different people doing different things like a group. possibly. Right. So or or maybe there's like we're not just one character but there's different people with different motives for what they're doing mm-hmm. as opposed to one specific serial killer. Because we even have people um the gentleman who is coming after Ava, the girl that Steven took in his trunk. That gentleman comes as well, and we see him in Juarez, and we also see him in El Paso. And so there's a bunch of, there's so many storylines, and you wonder how they all must connect somehow. But right. it seems like there's a different, maybe not bad guy, but there's a different person yeah. controlling each situation. And, and let's go ahead and talk on Steven and everything that happens with him in this episode before we go to the finale point where Steven has taken this girl, for, I, I believe her name's Eva Mendez, if I or remember correctly. Guerrero. Guerrera. Guerrera. Eva, Eva, Eva Mendes is, is a celebrity. Yeah, yes. she's say. a celebrity. She's a yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's why yeah. it's in my head. Yeah. All right, Eva Guerra, and she she's taken by him, and he's telling her that apparently it's a safe place in the trunk in the first ep- or in mm. his uh, trailer in the first episode. But he locks her in there, he, though. Yeah, yeah, locks her in there, and then he, we see him in this episode taking out the garbage. Don't know if what's in there is yeah. it body pieces or what. We don't really know. Or yeah. that's what seems to be implied. Or it yeah. could just be garbage. It could be garbage. <laughs> right. And then you also see him very intrigued while he's at work with that picture of that blonde girl. Um, I didn't see her name. It was written on the paper. But uh, he he takes it off the wall. She was apparently, I don't know if he works at a, a hospital. Um, like a mental hospital. Or cause the way they were talking, yeah. it was almost as if they were patients. But if she came and left on her own, I don't really know yeah. what that situation was. But he, he took a, an interest in that one patient or yeah. person who was there yeah so we find out a little bit of what he does and this is also in the first episode he's the one who was uh, taking yeah. her so you have to wonder what was he doing with her as the one that she mm. apparently had called herself for some reason because she was she knew about this beforehand yeah, she'd she, already known she went to go find him yeah. so right so questionable but there is this man this hispanic guy chasing after her and um, Ryan Willis on the chat says, biggest question from the episode for me was that one Hispanic guy going around looking for the girl from last week. And Lions fan says, mine too. What was the significant point to that Hispanic guy? Hard scenes for me to comprehend. Don't know if it was uh, the subtitles. But it seems like this guy, and, and I think that's what you guys were talking about in the chat, but it seems like this guy is just somehow maybe related to her. Maybe it's a brother. Well, he it said, seems, you yeah. took her from me. Right. So it almost seems like as if... Like husband or brother. Brother, yeah. husband, mm. pimp. I mean, who knows? I mean, it, oh, yeah, it could it be she could be yeah. a prostitute. I mean... I felt more it was more like family. Like a, yeah, yeah, like a relationship, relationship or maybe a... Relationship sister, I took yeah. family. Yeah. I was thinking like brother, sister. Yeah, but he said it too. more like she was his possession. Yeah. So maybe like a girlfriend or something because you took something that's mine. I, don't, mm. I feel like he'd say that he'd be more passionate. It's my family. It's yeah. my, you know, I don't know. Well, I mean, he, he seemed pretty passionate. He was attacking people. But he seemed angry. Him he didn't, I didn't see love for the girl. I saw mm. like fury. Like right. he knew she was trying to leave because he was he was looking for her back there. That's, that's true. That's a mm. good point because he found the shoe. He's really just pissed off as opposed yeah. to upset. That's a good point. Yeah, mm. he, he seems angry and less concerned right. yeah definitely more mm. yeah i agree yeah you don't really see him upset at all about yeah. it and he can't be that great of a guy when he has all these connections with the border patrol and they're right. giving him stuff and the guy's like we're good right we're mm. you almost feel like they have something to square off yeah that's true 
So I don't know. I got a bad vibe from him. So I don't know. I didn't yeah. seem like a yeah, great guy. No, I didn't seem like a good guy to me either. <laughs> or maybe he's connected to these horrible things yeah. and still is his sister, yeah. but he knows how to work the system. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. So he's not a good guy, but yeah. I don't know. So yeah, he, he ends up chasing after her, uh, him, after Steven, and pretty much finds the, the apartment that they're in, or the, the office area, and it attacks his assistant. Or I mean, he's, I it doesn't was... seem like he's planning on killing her at first until she attacks him back. Well, no, I thought he was going to kill her when he, like, licked her tear. I thought that was a little <laughs> freaky. Yeah. I, I like tears, too. Yeah. <laughs> but the way he was touching her face, it almost looked like he was enjoying putting her yeah. through that. And so that's another reason I don't think he's, you know, got good intentions. He's a great guy. He's I don't know what you're talking about. A plus for a him. A plus man. <laughs> but, and I also think that Probably was... Probably as good of a guy as Marco. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But he, he found his apartment. So I think that was just a random neighbor. I don't even think she had anything to do with Steven. Because the guy gave him Steven's information. I don't think it would be his work info. I feel like it would have been his home address. I think so, too. So it's some random poor woman who didn't want him breaking into her neighbor's house. Yeah, she, uh, she's just trying to do the right thing. But she fought. But she did How fight. Did. She fought Power bravely. She was about to just call yeah. 911 right away. I thought she was just going to give up. What did she, she say? Just... Buenos dias, my ass? Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, too bad. That was pretty good. He tried to pull the charm on her. Did not work. Yeah. No, no. So... The other thing that we've got across the border in Juarez is we have these illegals who are crossing, and we have this this lady whose name we we haven't found out yet mm-hmm. in the show, and they're being led by some coyote to cross the border, and the person then does not want to stop and takes them all the dumps way, them, just yeah. dumps them off, yeah. and a brawl insists, and I wasn't sure if if the guy in the truck was the coyote or if the the man who was attacking the guy in the truck was the coyote. I think it was the guy in the truck. Yeah, yeah. because. After that, the girl had to lead them the whole way, and it right. seemed like the guy was unsure. It almost because that he, was supposed so why didn't to be they his just path. Take the truck. That's what I, I was. Don't get. I was thinking the same That's thing too. I don't get, but I think yeah. They, so you thought the same thing? But, yeah. they, but she said border patrol was coming, so maybe it was just an issue. But I mean, you know, rather than kind of walking in the middle of the right. desert, you know, with not no and water. Those old and those people stayed there, like the older couple. They're like, we're not, we can't we're not walk going, with you. Yeah. So it's like, what is what happens to them? They died too, I guess, or they went to that little town area that we right, saw and just turned themselves in. So were they, were they dumped? They obviously dumped somewhere in Mexico. They, they hadn't crossed the border yet, right? Correct. So they were yeah, right. I believe okay. so. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think they were close, but they weren't. So that the close. old people just made the decision they weren't going to bother. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can't be arrested for not crossing the border. No, no. And I think since border patrol was coming, yeah. maybe they would just pick them up, bring them back. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, what that's, I'm saying. That's so what that might have been a better option for those people. That, that could have been why they stayed there because she was saying border con- <laughs> yeah. con- patrol is coming. So they're like, all right, let's just stay here and wait for border control. Border control, exactly. Yeah. That might have yeah. been a wiser decision for all it of them in the like end. Like but they didn't decide that. Uh, but but I still don't understand why you wouldn't just take the truck. <laughs> Kind yeah, I was thinking that too. And I'm, I guess At least, like, you know, take it a bit further. <laughs> right, like maybe they were afraid that, oh, the truck would be identified or something like that. But, like, I don't know. I, I, you'd think it wouldn't be identified because that's what they were taking in the first place to yeah. get there. I don't, I, mean, know. I don't know. But I guess maybe you need, like, a white guy to cross the border with you in it. So then, like... No, I was just saying you could drive sort take of closer. Take it closer to the border yeah, and then than, walk. Rather right. than do those days of... How, I don't know how long they were walking for. But I was thinking you could just drive the truck a little closer. I don't <laughs> know. It doesn't make <laughs> sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. No. Yeah, I don't know. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but um, yeah, so and you had meat on on board, so you didn't have to worry about eating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they they had everything they could possibly want. I don't know. Bad decisions. She goes, and they they as they are running out of water, they come to um, this memorial. Yeah, it looks like the same. So... It looks like almost Creepy. a very similar memorial to the one that was in the, in tunnel. the tunnel. Yeah, it uh, was. very very similar one, except for that. And I think it's just something that, you know they pray to, but. Mm. I was kind of thinking like Dia de los Muertos almost, but I mean, clearly it's not. Yeah. But um, yeah, so the, all the water around the skeleton, she gets a bad idea. And we come to our detectives who are on their way as they mm. find out something has happened over here. They cross the border and we get the same border patrol officer or the same officers we had in the last episode. Yeah. And, and they, they find a bead. First of all, they find a bead what is in this one scene. We don't know. I think I it's th- a rosary bead. Oh, okay. That, that's I wasn't my, sure what it was. That's my guess. I don't okay. know if that's a prediction, but right. it looks... Um, I've seen rosaries where they take real roses and they ball them up oh, and they make the, really? the beads okay. out of them. Right. But So I don't know if it has a significance to it. I yeah. know because with, you know, they're praying to these things and I think the skeleton has some sort of mm. religious aspect to it. I mean, I don't really know. But they do find that bead at the first, right. at, the at the crime first scene time, yeah. where the judge was originally killed. And right. something about this scene too that's also important there and this is with the symbolism I want to talk about is that 
the border patrol guy kills a coyote and sticks it up on yeah, a snake. Yeah, that was pretty grisly. And it was grisly, but I mean, if you don't know what a coyote is, you mm. wouldn't really get that. Yeah. The whole idea of the coy- coyotes are the ones who bring Mexicans, illegal immigrants, yeah. across the border. Mm-hmm. So I think there was so a little bit of, of symbolism there. kind of a warning thing, was it? I mean, I don't even know if the border patrol guy necessarily knew because his character's kind of dumb. Yeah. But I think it was just a symbolism for the show to present to us, like, look, this yeah. is what's happening But I mean, it was here. still a pretty grisly thing to do. I mean, you shoot a coyote's bad enough, but then he right. kind of doesn't sound so like sort of kind of Official kind of symbol. Of Why it would you do that? One, animal he's, sacrifice. Type he said of it thing. keeps the others away. Mm. Right. If they see the dead one, it keeps them away. But I actually don't think he's border patrol. I think he's like just a police officer now. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he's just a police and, officer. And the way he, you know, he asked if he could be on the task force. It seems like he doesn't have a lot of authority. No. Nah, and you know, and he wants to be a part of it. And so maybe he will be reoccurring. His name was M something. M. Stokes. M. Stokes. Because you read that off of I, his badge. I read his badge. Oh. I didn't, I, so, but yeah. I don't know if we'll see him Paige again. Paige got it off the badge. Yeah. I did, but I don't know if we'll see him again. But and, he, and real quick, though, before we get into this finale scene, I, I forgot to mention, we talked about it briefly, but it was an awesome scene. The whole thing with the actor who was hired who comes and oh, yeah. talks about yeah. how, uh, and I'm, I'm getting this thanks to the guys on the live chat for bringing this up. Ryan Wilson, the Lions fan. Thank you, guys. Um yeah, that scene, that was awesome. Uh, that scene was great. So where yeah. we find out this actor just, at first he like whips out, what is it going to be? Oh, it's, it's an inhaler. Like, oh. <laughs> inhaler. Yeah, and, and it turns out that he recorded these lines three, three years, years ago. Yeah. So this has really been a long time coming. Mm. Somebody's put a lot of thought and time into this. Yeah, and it keeps on expanding back. As first we had 14 months from the mm. first uh, episode, now it turns out three years at least in the yeah. works. So long, long time, and... Uh, that was that was pretty cool to me. And it just seems like I mean I get it. They, like it seems like um, you know um, she she just doesn't get it mm. at all why he would do that. And it's just like well you're an actor and you're looking for work. I mean it seems like something that would be in a movie. It clearly was in a movie. It was well, in a well, TV that's show. That's right. It could have been you know? for a TV show. So I mean like you you see that you think it's work and yeah. you, you and don't necessarily question it too the, much. The statement was almost statistics. Why do we care about one mm. judge who was killed when so many or one white woman? It wasn't specific. Right. You wouldn't yeah. necessarily know that it was used in that type of like bomb but, situation yeah. but they apparently knew who they were targeting or they knew they were targeting a high profile white person mm. yeah totally so I, I mean I just like that scene overall I thought it was a fun scene it was kind of like a cool like wow this is like just something I wouldn't have thought of that they pulled mm. in so I, I really enjoyed that aspect but we, we do finally get this uh, final moment where D- Daniel is the one who had called in everything and called in the report because it turns out the GPS coordinates he got that they were heading off to mm. was the where these illegals have been heading to. Do you think, here's my one question though, he's being followed by the other detective in in El Paso. So the gentleman with the mustache, he's following Daniel. Do you think Daniel even called this in or the fact that he was following him led the detective to the scene? Do you think Daniel would keep that for himself? Oh, that's cool. It does seem like Daniel would use that as a reporter. For breaking news and to break it to Texas in his own way instead of having the police come? That's a good point because it seems like he's mm. the type of person who would be like, oh, I need to break this myself. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah I a mean, good they point. leave it up to, I'm sure we'll find out next episode, but they leave it to our imagination to determine how the police got there. Mm. Yeah, because we never see a call. I mean, just imagine because Daniel was heading that direction. Yeah. But yeah, so it does. It turns out that all that water, the uh, the prediction by our, our lady friend was correct. What do you think? What did they put in it the It was water? poison. Some sort just of poison. poison. We did, but we don't know. We don't no, know. No, no. But it was some okay. sort of poison. Maybe arsenic. Yeah. Arson. Maybe arson. Yeah, they didn't. But, they didn't but taste I'd be it. suspicious of bottled water in the middle of the. I don't know. They but were I just. I mean, so they thirsty. were dying anyways. They're just mm. like it's water. It's. I mean, it was like there's all these illegals who go on quest yeah. anyway. So maybe it was just a normal coyote thing. Yeah. I don't know. And I she, don't know. She just had one sip, so she was still sick. But, right, but, but she wasn't. As she saw what the actual mm. um, image was, where it was that skeleton, and that's yeah. what gave her the bad premonition. Yeah. But yeah, so it turns out they're all dead, and now we've got our detectives there on the scene checking it out and what's, what's going on. Uh, big. I mean, that, that was a lot of people who died in that moment. It was nine bodies yeah, at that okay. scene. So, And we're left to kind of guess what's happening to her because we somebody, don't know who's picking her up. Somebody's right. picking her up off the side and of the It doesn't look like a good person to See, be I picking her up. I feel like it up. might have been Stephen. <laughs> Yeah, it could have been yeah, Stephen. I, I, I have a feeling it's not a good person picking no. up. No. No. You don't think so? <laughs> you definitely get that. I, I yeah. feel like this is going to be a tricky thing. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think it's going to be a trick where we, we're led this episode to believe it's a bad person and someone's actually going to help her. Yeah. Because I think she's going to be a central character. What if it's okay. like Charlotte? 
or somebody. Like That'd be crazy. Charlotte's be, just uh, happened to be driving. But I don't know why she'd be driving in Juarez. Yeah. yeah. No, well, well, well that was Mexico. Texas. Wasn't that south of the border? That, no, oh, I no, think that she had crossed cr- it. She crossed the no, border? No, I think she had crossed. Oh, she got across. Did she okay. get across? Okay. I think I, that's what I got from it because she went on without them. Mm. But I wasn't sure. How, I mean, we don't know how far she got. I don't know how far she got because it sounded like she was sick. She was kind of crawling, yeah. wasn't she? So she yeah. was still sick. Sick, dehydrated, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, we get another bead here, too. So, another bead at this crime scene. And mm-hmm. every single time Sonia who finds these beads, so, she, again, we get that she is very detail-oriented. And, mm-hmm. yeah. and that is where her strength is. Even though she, she's not empathetic, she can't relate mm-hmm. to people, she's, she should just be a crime scene investigator. That should be all she does yeah, is just investigate crime exactly. scenes. She shouldn't talk that to anybody. Her, right. That's no. her only duty, and she would be perfect as a crime mm-hmm. scene investigator. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But yeah. she finds that beat, and we're, I, I'm curious to see where that's going to lead to. Mm-hmm. For that well, I think beat. it's going to be throughout the whole season. I don't think we're going to find out anytime yeah. soon. I don't. I totally agree. All right, but before we move on to some predictions for the show, guys, I do want to mention that some of our AfterBuzz staff created an amazing little, and by little I mean giant movie called <laughs> Serial Buddies. And if you enjoy murders and murder as this show <laughs> happens to have but want a funny twist a funny to it one, yes funny no, no twist to it <laughs> so you can laugh about it instead of this which are, where it's kind of horrible do check out serial buddies it's by many of the after buzz crew are in it and worked on it produced it it's on itunes for 5.99 so make sure that you go check out serial buddies on itunes yes, check I'm that bugging. out very funny check uh, that out yes <laughs> <laughs> all right with that said let's uh, let's go ahead and talk about some predictions <laughs> Now, your After Buzz TV <laughs> predictions. I, I mean, we were doing a lot of predictions throughout this, but what, yeah. what do you guys think? What are some of your big predictions that we're going to see? I don't know if I've got any big predictions yet. I'm still kind of confused of where this is. I mean, I know there's going to be a lot revealed, but um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I have any major ones myself, but go ahead, guys. <laughs> I, I don't have any major ones. Mm. I think Steven's going to be a good guy. I think mm. everybody yeah. is not who they seem that they are. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Other I think than, Charlotte, I think, is going to be yes. some, something or we're maybe, going to discover. Yeah, right. maybe Sonia is the only one I think is straight up mm. because well, yeah. that's the way they cut it. That's who she is. It's but what I she think, is. I think maybe with Sonia, we might get a little more backstory, as you said, like I with hope her so. sister, and we sort of get, I think we need to, we need to feel more empathy for her. Right. So I think at some point in this series, we're going to find out more about her and her history that would be my prediction uh, i totally yeah. i totally agree yeah. with that mm. and by the way this is really cool what you brought in here catherine this is this Just the bridge, press notes yeah press notes. yeah so catherine with the insider info <laughs> right and um I, you know what i, I agree with you Paige. Yeah. i think that it's going to turn out that steven is actually not a bad guy mm-hmm. i don't i don't know if he's necessarily good good but I don't, I don't think he's a bad guy i think that's just a twist that they're leading us up to that's kind of would be my prediction with him. I think that we're going to find out a little bit more with Marco where maybe he's not as innocent as we think he is. Maybe mm-hmm. he, ha- he might have some sort of past because of how crooked everything is. And I mean, now that he's a family man, I think that he's a family man. He's a good guy now. But he might have some sort of past in that, yeah. in, in, in a sense. Yeah, El Capitan, I think, is pretty straightforward. I don't think he's, I think he's a bad dude. He's a bad dude. Bad dude. Definitely a bad dude. And then the real question to me is Daniel. I, I'm still not sure what all of his secrets are because it seems yeah. like he does have a lot of secrets. I think they'll come out of the closet real soon. Yeah. Oh, you think he's going to come out of the closet? No. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, a I secret? Know. No, <laughs> I know. Skeleton. I know. It's his skeleton. His skeletons right. will come out. <laughs> his topple out of the closet. <laughs> and and Charlotte, I think she's actually pretty straightforward. I don't. I think she's just like, you know, lost her husband. She's a little out mm. of it. And uh, I think some... Bad things are gonna be happening to her. Yeah, soon. but I think she's gonna pull through. That's why I think she's such a, gonna be a really strong yeah. character. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of challenges, but I think we'll see her. Really I think we're gonna through. see a lot of bad things happening. That's what my prediction is. A bad lot of bad things bad. are gonna be happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us on episodes one and two of the Bridge. <laughs> next week we will do a single episode, just episode Trace for next yeah. week. So do join us AfterBuzzTV.com at 10 p.m. If you want to join in on the live chat, that's 10 p.m. Pacific time, or check us out on YouTube and iTunes. And once again, guys, I'm Dave Klein. You can find me on Twitter at the Dave Klein. That's K L E I N. The Dave Klein. The Dave Klein. <laughs> okay, the one and only. Dave Klein was Dagan. That's why. And there is only one. <laughs> there can only be one. Highlander. Okay. Exactly. I'm Paige Sullivan. You can find me on Twitter at Paige Sell S U L L. Okay. And there was only one Catherine Tulich, so I was lucky. I'm just at Catherine Tulich. K A T H E R I N E T U L I C H. On Instagram and Twitter. Whatever, Catherine. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us, and we will see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. 
To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.